So we're here at the CS 2019 and uh, this is a very compact smart glass solution right here. So hi, so who are you? Hi, my name is Jeff Jacobson. I'm the senior advisor to the CEO at Copen Corporation. I am also the chief architect and inventor of GoldenEye. And this is, looks like a very compact smart glass solution with the articulating uh, system right here? Yes, it has multiple adjustments. You can pivot the display, you can rotate the display, you can rotate the arm in and out of use. And the whole arm is like smoothly rotating also? Yes. Nice. How do, you, how do you do that? How's it possible? Well, we've spent the last 10 years working on various versions of GoldenEye. The original versions uh, up until 2014 weighed as much as 14 or 15 ounces. This is now a higher performance, more reliable solution. It weighs one and a half ounces. So it's really light to put right there in the glass? Yes. It actually uses a magnetic coupling. There is a special type of magnet here. There's a bracket that fits onto your glasses. You can place it in proximity to where you want to use it. Now you can adjust it. Typically you wear it below your line of sight or if you're working in a close field like repairing a watch, you would move it high, tilt it so that you can look into the display and see the information but your workspace is still open and free. So are you saying the Swiss watchmakers could be using that? They could. Repairing a watch, so you get all the schematics up there? All the details. Or working on an airplane or what Correct. people be doing? And while you're doing it, if you had a question, if you needed help from an expert at some other location, it has a 12 megapixel camera. So you can present a point of view video and you can stream as easily as connecting up to a fully integrated Zoom communication platform, which is part of the basic application that allows GoldenEye to run. And uh, this fully articulating arm and the, the coping micro display, the way it works, uh, allows for a dashboard and you can place it exactly where you want to be comfortable. Correct. Well, the waveguide systems are great, but I like you can't adjust those, right? <clears throat> The problem that you have with waveguide systems are if you're in a bright ambient environment, your eyes will dilate. Um, it's hard for those solutions to present enough illumination to the eye. One of the unique characteristics of this version of GoldenEye is it can produce up to 2600 nits to the eye, which, to put that in comparison, the average wearable, the average pair of glasses out there is producing somewhere between 400 and 800 nits of illumination to the eye. With waveguides? With waveguides, with see-through optics, various solutions. So, um, so the coping micro display gets so bright? It gets bright enough that in environments like this you arbitrarily dim the illumination so it's not like looking into a flashlight. So um, right here, this is so compact, the way it works is a display port with the phone? Yes, that's so, the beauty of this. This device weighs one and a half ounces. This device is military rugged and IP67. It doesn't have a processor. It doesn't have a battery. It doesn't get warm. It doesn't have any radios in it. All of the processing and all of the wireless communications is done from the phone that you pair it to. And phones are like such a stable segment of the tech industry, right? This yes. is like where most money is going into the phones, most money is spent on phones, and so they're like, they have real good control on the radios, everything is so stable and great, and then you just uh, use this as an accessory. A typical cell phone manufacturer will spend upwards of $10 million just designing and optimizing the Bluetooth and wireless interface on their phone, the location of their antenna and the selection of their antenna. $10 million is more than typically any glass manufacturer spends on their entire product. The reason they can do that is they build phones expecting they're going to sell 10 million or more. So spending a dollar per device in order to optimize its wireless performance in technologies other than cellular is to their advantage and to the user's advantage. So that means you take advantage of all that work by just plugging in. So which phone do you have working with it? Well, for example, this is a V20. This is an LG phone. 
we also have the V40, which is the newest phone which was just introduced. Primary difference is the V40 has a lot longer battery life and has a lot higher processing performance. But <clears throat> as you know, cellular phones upgrade roughly every 12 to 18 months. Industry users, enterprise users, want to have the latest security features. They want to have the, the, the best wireless performance, best battery life. And so they no longer buy phones, they rent phones. So you go to Verizon and you say you want a V40 phone and you need X number of phones, they will rent those phones to you for $20, $25 a month. And at the end of 12 months, if the phone is still operating, you can turn it in, get the next version of the phone, and continue on. And the nice thing about GoldenEye is, it just pairs up with any phone. So um, this is the cable you have right here, and this is a special cable. Yes, the manufacturer of this cable calls it the magic cable because it was never supposed to work. If you go out and look at Type-C cables that are being used for DisplayPort and USB. They're typically four to five millimeters in diameter. This is a two millimeter cable. As you can see, it's as supple as spaghetti. The idea being that we can do USB 3.0, 3.1, and DisplayPort over this cable. And it's bi-directional. So it doesn't matter which end I plug into the phone or I plug into the GoldenEye. GoldenEye drives its power and its processing from the phone or it can be plugged into a tablet or PC because GoldenEye operates both in a Windows environment as well as in an Android environment right now. So any Windows uh, laptop that has a Type-C DisplayPort potentially yes, also plugs in? Yes, you can plug it in right now. If you're running the user interface application, uh, you'll be able to access all files, all information, and use all the resources that are available on the phone or the PC. And so uh, this one, you plug it in right there, and it's going to get the power from the phone to run the, the micro display in the system right here? Correct. All right, so let's do a video of the, the user interface. Right here on the screen, uh, we can see what, you, what you're seeing in the micro display, right? Yes. And then you can do voice commands. Correct. It has a, sp a speech and gesture interface. For example, if you want to use the applications that are native to your phone, navigate home, page right, page right, page left. So in theory, you could watch, you could see any Android app in the micro display, uh, and potentially some optimized Android apps for this kind of application. Yes, you have two types of applications here: those that are native to the phone, those that come straight from the Google Store, and you have those that have been enhanced for speech and gesture to optimize their use with GoldenEye. To see those specifically, you say, "Open Home." Each of these apps have been optimized. For example, and when you tilt dialer, your head, oh, sorry, yeah, when you were tilting your head, it was actually choosing each of the icons, right? You, you, you tilting your head, you're moving the pointer. Yes. Go back. Open dialer. Pointer right. Plus one, four, zero, eight, eight. Three, nine, three, five, six, one. Dial number. So, right That's there is dialing. Calling my phone on the table. and call. And it's okay that it's on, on YouTube, your phone number? It's okay, my phone okay. number is on YouTube. But <laughs> it's my business phone. All right. So then people can call you up to, to do some business about this project. Correct. And, and, um, Go back. So let me just walk you through some, some simple training exercises for the various user interfaces we have. Open training. Welcome to GoldenEye Training. Get started. So it says icon mode. As I move across the panel, you will see the head tracker move, icon mode.
Now it's asking me to move over to lime and then down to yellow. And then it asks me to go down to brown. All that's done with head movement and then back to blue. Now, besides icon mode, we have pointer mode. Now, <clears throat> I certainly can move my head all the way over to that balloon and say select. Select. All right, so now I've popped that balloon. But if I'm working in an application and I need to go somewhere else on the screen, it's kind of tedious to have to move my head all around to track that. So if I just say pointer right, it moves to the right. Pointer left, pointer left, moves to the left. Pointer reset, pointer reset, select, pointer right. Select. Now I can say scroll down. Scroll down. I can say scroll up. Scroll auto. Now this has a tendency to move based on my head head movement. If I move down and I stop moving my head, it stays still. If I move my head up, it continues to travel up. Scroll off. So <clears throat> this is kind of a poor man's way of, of using eye tracking. Um, you say gaze on. Now this works based on dwell time. So if I look over here, at that balloon and I hold that there for a predetermined amount of time. It's like a click. It performs the function of selection. But I don't have to say anything to do it and it's user selectable as to how long the gaze period can be. And I can turn gaze on and off any time while I'm in operation. Now I can say page down. I can say page up. Page up. Now, back in icon mode, I can say, move down, move right, move left, move up. Now, <clears throat> sometimes you want to correct a spelling yeah. in a text, and you want to add uh, a word that maybe is unusual. So I say, show keyboard. Show keyboard. Apple. Oh, excuse me. I'm reading it. <clears throat> Alpha. Papa. Papa. Lima. Echo. Kilo. India. Whiskey. India. Now I've just spelled that word. Hide keyboard. So Enter. here you're going to be entering some text? Yes. We're in Las Vegas at the end of CES 2019. So it's using uh, Google's text-to-speech, uh, speech-to-text? Uh, uh, speech yes. And Go back. Uh, now, show help. Show edit, show navigation, show applications, page left, show controls, icon mode. As I move my head around, you can see that I can highlight the individual icons. Select. This gives me all the commands that I have to control the display while I'm in the middle of using it. So there's a there's a whole list right here um, of uh, controls that are that you're able to input. So Go you've back. developed this whole system to to basically be able to do everything by voice commands. Yes, we've enabled we've given the user a noise cancelled speech solution that will operate under any noisy environment, literally in 
all commonly used languages in the world today. Hands-free. Hands-free. So you have your hands free to do some other kind of work to be uh, productive. That's the idea. Being able to do mobile communications and mobile computing hands free so that you have both hands in order to perform the tasks that you're trying to, to execute. Can I try to see in the, in the screen with the camera to see uh, well, if we can see something? So uh, is, what's the resolution in here? It's, yes. Can you see it? Yeah, I need to get the right angle. Oh, I can see it there. Yeah, so it's um, it's 854 times 480 in there. Yes. A micro display. Yes. And it looks like a, like a tablet that you have in front of you. It looks like roughly an eight-inch tablet that is positioned about 18 inches in front of your eye, wherever you happen to look. And the reason for this design is that. It will clip on easily to safety glasses or any type of reading glasses magnetically. I just don't happen to have a clip here available at the moment. It allows you to move the boom out of your line of sight and below your line of sight and allows you to position it so that when you're operating the display and receiving information, it's not in your workspace. And so, so it's, it's dashboard, which is the future of this kind of product, right? Yes, you want to get Anything you're interested in receiving, when you want it, right now, no matter where it's located. So because we're using a cellular platform, we have the access to Bluetooth, to Wi-Fi, and cellular. And because it works with the latest and most modern phones, it has the latest standards, the latest security. And this device never goes out of, of um, date. It basically is always current with whatever it, it's being hosted by. You can just upgrade the phone potentially every year. If I if I got a newer phone with a, a better processing platform and better power consumption and better wireless standards, I can plug in and immediately take advantage of all of them. Because soon there's going to be 5G phones. That could be a good thing to you update. Just plug too. this into. It's solved. Goldeneye has no processor. It has no battery. It has no radios. All the processing and all the information is gathered and produced on the phone. Which you can have in the, in the side pocket, in this kind of pocket, in the jacket pocket, somewhere else? Correct. You can put the phone wherever you want to and you don't have to touch the phone. And when you have a magnetic bracket, you can position it on your glasses so that you don't have to touch it while you're using it. And because it has a magnetic bracket, you can have the magnetic bracket set up so that you can use it on the left side or the right side. And potentially you can have other Bluetooth input for the phone. Go back. So if you want to have like a, some kind of controller or something, mm -hmm. uh, like a, Go a, back. A, 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 a potentially there could be some some open kind home, hands-free solutions also to control it, sure. other than voice. So uh, we're standing here on the 23rd floor, of the uh, Plaza Hotel, open camera. <laughs> so if we can see this part. Right. So yeah. I give a permission to the camera which is a standard Android yeah. procedure. You can, uh, maybe can you hold it like this? Sure. Yeah. Can I hold it like that? Yeah. Now you can see exactly what I see real time. Zoom level two. Zoom level three. Zoom level four. Nice. So I'll take a, a picture out here to say. Take photo. Show photo. Zoom level two. Now you'll notice the picture in picture in the corner. It shows contextually what I'm looking at. Zoom level three. Zoom level four. Zoom level five. I still have the ability to look at anything under magnification. So you have the the head tracking. It's like moving from an 8 inch screen to a 200 inch screen just by giving it the level. Zoom level 10. Now to give nice. you some contrast with that, zoom level 1. Big nice. difference. So you can do that with, with uh, any workspace that you're in. Like schematics. Correct. Open camera.
start recording. So now nice. I can record you. Nice. And I have a, a full Zoom communications platform in this, fully speech enabled, so that I can send this video to you and you can send your video to me and we can trade and share documents while we're operating together. And is a little light showing people that you're recording? That's correct. Now, just because you have your flashlight on, I'll say flashlight on. Yeah. Flashlight on. Oh, that gets really bright. All right, so now, I can look in dark spaces when I don't have a hand, uh, flashlight <coughs> readily available. Flashlight off. Nice. Goes back to being dim again. So every aspect of this development in this design has been to take the readily accessible capabilities and multiplex them. So I have an LED to show you that I'm using the camera or that the camera is active. But I also have an LED that I can turn on exceptionally bright for when I want to see in dark places. Go back. And you have a button right here. What do you do with this button? This button is there for applications that may require a button. At the present time, we, we don't really have a use for that button. It is a programmable button there, should we ever need one. So that's just an API? And uh, uh, with, with all these voice commands, potentially people could make apps that could be added to this menu here. Open camera. That could have uh, voice commands, right? Yes, that's true. But Open camera. Potentially also a lot of those commands can work on potentially any other Android app, even if it's not optimized. Correct. Just as a kind of like a mouse input. Yeah. So, Open uh, home. So how soon is this available and uh, is there a price? We are shipping um, small quantities of this device right now to major customers and major users that have expressed an interest in an AR device for enterprise application in service maintenance and manufacturing. We're capturing their inputs and their information, looking for ways to further improve the design as we move it towards manufacturing, which will take place towards the middle of this year, 2019. All right, and um, what's what's the kind of price that potentially could have? In quantities of one, the current price is eight hundred and ninety-nine dollars. All right, so um, that's getting very exciting, very very compact. Yes. Um, so, the, in the future, you envision that this is something that everybody should be using, right? It enables a user to have a, a ability to utilize all the processing and communications on their phone in a hands-free modality. Um, the system is smart enough that even if I put it on and got in my car, the head tracker would sense the movement of the car and it would then basically shut off the display so that I wouldn't be distracted by it. It also has the capability of, once it detects that you're moving faster than a, a, a normal walk, that it will look at what's in front of it. And if it sees uh, a dashboard and a steering wheel or levers and controls for a machine, it will then put you through a series of permissions in order to be able to use the device while you're sitting in front of a steering wheel or instrumentation which would normally be associated with a moving vehicle. But generally, it will preclude people from accidentally trying to use it. It does recognize, because the applications are smart enough, that while you're driving or moving and the camera is, is no longer providing any information to you, the display is no longer providing information to you, that you now have to have enhanced audio. So it now says, okay, you can't see the display, so I'm going to be a little more precise and give you a little more detail than you would normally see. Now, if you come to a stop, if you're driving along in your car and the display shows nothing in it, the moment that your car comes to a halt, the moment that your forklift comes to a halt, the display is fully operational and fully back on. You don't have to turn it on. So there's like more and more intricacies that could be added 
and it's through your implementation on, on the Android, right? It's just we it, we don't we don't write applications for for uh, specific use cases. All the applications that run on this device, especially in the enterprise, are written by software companies. What we've tried to do is write the application interface to provide an optimal user interface to the person using this device. And this device can be used equally as well. And if you see on this side here, uh, just sorry to interrupt, uh, there, in the O you have a... It's an automatic light sensor which sen senses ambient light so it can adjust the display illumination according to the environment that you're in. You also have the ability to instantaneously Instantaneously? Tell the device what level of illumination you want by just saying display brightness and give a level. Level one, two, three, four, five. And uh, right here I'm, I'm seeing a, a headset jack, right? The yes, there's a three and a half millimeter audio jack that you can use if you're using ear cups or you prefer to use an earbud in the environment that you're in. But there's a one watt speaker mounted right here which is quite capable that you can use when you prefer not to use an earbud or you do not have to use protective ear covers in an industrial environment. And this uh, coping micro display that's in there, it's several more, more than two decades of experience in doing this kind of stuff. Copen has been building displays for 25 years. Uh, yes, we've built many different versions of displays, many different resolutions, and many different technologies. Transmissive, reflective, now OLED technology. Um, in this case of, of GoldenEye, GoldenEye has been in development through eight generations. This is the eighth generation, and we've seen it reduce in size and weight from roughly one pound down to 1.5 ounces. And this device is more rugged, it is faster and higher performance, uses less energy than any prior device before it. This is the most rugged, most reliable device for AR applications in an enterprise that's available today. It also happens to be the least expensive. I was very excited that Google was getting people excited with this segment, and they, but they, it was sad that they didn't put it on the market, they didn't make it available. Yes. You, hopefully you definitely want to make this available, right? Yes. This next step is, is just going to be in all the stores, right? It has to we, be. We have worked for the past six years, seven years with Verizon. We've worked with a number of their major customers. We are now working very closely with LG. We have this device currently running with uh, the V20 phone and now the new V40 phone from LG. LG has made taken steps to optimize their phone and their operating system to provide enhanced capability for, for GoldenEye. All right, so that's really awesome to see the latest generation CS 2019. And 2019 is hopefully going to be a very exciting year for this segment. Hopefully it starts to reach something that could be mass. People are now moving from doing pilots to actually doing implementations. The scaling is going to begin in 2019. People are looking for a better, lighter, faster, less expensive, uh, more ubiquitous solution. And so some of the people that we're supplying this device to have an equal requirement to use it with Windows-based products as they do with Android-based products. And so being able to provide one device that can answer both their Windows needs as well as their Android needs. Being able to unplug it from my phone and plug it into my PC because that's what's required by our corporation means that, the, that they only have to stock one device. And because this has no radios, no processor, no memory in it, it's extremely secure. Once it's decoupled from the phone, it's inert. There's no data, no information on this that anyone can discern what it was being used for or how it was being used. This is our 15th straight year right. group of guys. Yeah, all so our that's really awesome. Thanks a lot. So looking forward to, uh, to the next, what's going to happen with this. Yes. We'll see what happens in Barcelona. All right. It is.